If you're looking for the gear you need in the colors you bleed, then make your first stop Co-op. Much more than just a bookstore, Co-op has the largest selection of LSU merchandise for the whole family, including tailgating supplies, LSU clothing and accessories, great gifts, and a whole lot more. Stop in or order online for the best prices on art supplies, school supplies, and textbooks. The Co-op Bookstore, where you'll always find the gear you need in the colors you bleed. At Gulf Coast Office Products, we're at pace with the future, offering leading technology and multifunctional office equipment. Whether it's copying, printing, scanning, or faxing, you'll receive the best in quality right here locally. We needed to move documents between our office, the insurance company, and our customers. Gulf Coast Office Products provided us with that technology. From full color imaging equipment to document imaging software for storage and retrieval, we're leading the way. Gulf Coast Office Products, excellence in imaging solutions. The staff at Peak Performance treats every patient like an athlete that needs to get back into the game. If your doctor recommends physical therapy, choose Peak Performance. So we have seven locations to serve you. Louisiana Football Magazine is sponsored by Southern Bell Catering. Visit us today for all of your full-service catering needs. Southern Bell Catering. Welcome back to Louisiana Football TV Magazine. I also want to mention that Southern Bell Catering does holiday foods. They do turkey, dressing, uh, anything you want for Thanksgiving or Christmas. So they do cater any holiday food that you want to order for the holidays. Uh, I want to go ahead and go back to, to Roe Brown. Ro, I was asking you uh, off the air, mm -hmm. who had the biggest impact on your life with your profession? You told me your dad. Peter Brown, my father. Yeah, unquestionably. He had a good friend of his named Emil Smith, who was a great football player at Xavier Prep in the 30s. Wow. And they drug me around the games when I was a little kid, and, you know, I asked stupid questions, and he answered my stupid questions. And, you know, it's unquestionably my father, though. He, uh, you know, I mean, he taught me, I think, how to watch sports. He taught me, you know, when sports meant something. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, when it was when it was time to go beyond the and ball. You say he had a vision with it too. He had vision. With yeah, stuff. all kinds yeah. of visions. You know, yeah. it, it, my sisters and I we laugh about this all the time. In July, we always think about my dad when Wimbledon comes about, okay. because we can remember in 1960 he sat there and he said, you know, I don't understand why Wimbledon isn't on television. They got satellites flying around out there. They, this should be on television. And we're going, what is he talking about? <laughs> right. <laughs> and he said, now we got satellites. You know, and he said, one day everybody in this country is going to want to play tennis. They think it's a sissy game, but it's not. Right. You know, we're going, what is it? You know, yeah. And sure enough, you know, it, it's, you know, so, it you know, he just did a lot of things, mentioned a lot of things like that. And, uh, you know, he just, he used to quiz me on stuff that I couldn't possibly know. And that's how I learned it. Well, speaking of tennis, I heard the Williams sisters are from New Orleans originally. Oh, I don't know about they that. Went, they grew up in California, but uh, the dad was from New Orleans. Well, he may have been, but I don't think they were ever. But the tie were with two of the best in the business yeah, right now. Yeah, okay, but we'll, we'll, we'll take them. The few American ones. We'll take them. Right, <laughs> the few Americans that are doing it. But there's so many that come out of those other countries. But um, your take on the Saints this year, before we talk about some mm -hmm. of the kids that play, but you have followed the Saints since the – first days uh, well yeah I mean you know when you were you know I mean I was in high school then of course you know I was like I was actually there when John Gilliam returned the opening kickoff and everything on September 17th 1967 but in covering the Saints I guess I've been covering them since about the mid 70s uh, you know right now it strangely looks the same as Jim Haslett right <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean and it may, I'm not saying it's going to yeah. end that right, way but it's but similar yeah it, it's time similar. frame that, it, exactly that year. the time frame you know you know the contract extension and the you know mm -hmm. the playoffs right out of the bat right off the bat you know the first year and then it kind of went off and evened out and you had eight and eights and eight and eights Deuce and was doing greater and he was young and, and younger. yeah and then you know you got some you know problems you know I'm not saying they have them but you got some personality problems and that sort of thing but you know it looks strangely you know, I think the season may be done and when I say done I mean I don't think they're going to make the playoffs because I think that division is too difficult for them to be right. three games down at this point to the teams that they're to the team that they are three games down. The too. always good thing with a bad year you have a good draft maybe yeah maybe yeah maybe you know what do they do with that well that's uh, you know that remains <laughs> draft to be more seen. cornerbacks draft more <laughs> <laughs> that might be a good place to start but yeah it's a team that <clears throat> 
you know, it, it's with all the injuries, I'll give him that. Strangely now, Drew Brees is starting to look like Jim Everett. A lot of numbers, but they don't mean anything. Right. You know. Without the wins. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And if they don't win, that's how Comeback it looks. I mean, he's been playing yeah. great, but you know, if you're not winning, that's yeah. how that looks. It's like a lot of numbers that don't mean anything. A lot of a lot of pad the numbers late in the game when you're losing. <laughs> yeah. And they open up the zone. They they go from man to man the zone late. Right. Yeah. And in the NFL they they do that all the time. <clears throat> but I say that Drew Brees has really been playing well. I mean he yeah. three interceptions and that was uncharacteristic of him last Sunday against Atlanta. But you know, it's it's a team that has holes, and you knew it had holes coming in. The linebackers still aren't the best people. Jonathan Gilman's doing a pretty good job playing in that you know in that defense, but safeties, you know, safeties have been a disappointment. Harper and and the kids I was from the Bengals. On, I was never big on Kevin Case at all. Yeah, I, I you know I mean he had a big game against the Saints, and maybe that's why they when he was with yeah. the Bengals, and maybe that's why they thought that he would fit in so well and do so well for him. But I, I was never really a big fan of his, but. Yeah, you've got to have, you know, I'm a believer in players. I mean, I believe yeah. in coaches, you know. I mean, I love the Bear Bryants, you know, the Eddie Robinsons or whatever, the Paul Browns, who I think was the greatest coach of all time, but that's another thing. And uh, Cleveland Browns, yeah. 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 He knew talent. <laughs> he knew talent, and he, uh, he had a lot to do with the way the game was played. He had a terrific mm -hmm. impact on the game. You know, he invented the face mask. Uh, you know, playbooks and, you know, I mean, there are people, his, his disciples, you know, Chuck Knoll, Bill Walsh, all these people, you know, that's a bunch of Super Bowls right there. Yeah. And, you know, messenger guards sending in the plays with and you play, had the by guy, players. And you had yeah. the guy with the hat in Dallas, <coughs> Tom Landry. Yeah, yeah. The guy with Tom Landry, the hat. Yeah. He's remembered by a hat and mm -hmm. a suit. Yeah, well, that's the same like thing Paul Brown wore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, no, yeah. no. But, yeah, he dressed the same way Paul Brown did, but... Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, and once again, that comes from my father, you know, he's yeah. a big Paul well, Brown disciple. I'll, I'll make you feel good. When I was six years old, uh, actually my aunt's here tonight, but her husband, my uncle Leo, mm -hmm. we would, we would, I'd bet on games at six and win the bet. <laughs> and I could name them the rosters before uh -huh. the game started, before the Super Bowl gave the lineups out for the Steelers against the Cowboys. Mm. I was never a Cowboys fan. Uh -huh. And I was a Steelers fan because of Terry Bradshaw and Mel Blunt. They were Louisiana okay. natives. All right. So I didn't even know ah, what it, Terry Bradshaw is. Mel Blunt was up to go on. Mel Blunt went to Southern. Now. Right. Went to Southern <laughs> University. He's from and Georgia. Was a, and was mm -hmm. one of the greatest cornerbacks mm -hmm. ever. At 6'2", 210, back when linebackers were 210 back then. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, he'd be an outside linebacker now. Right, yeah. right. And, 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 and he was really bigger. than He was bigger than all the Steelers linebackers. He was larger than Jack, Jack Ham. Landry. He was larger than Jack Ham. He was larger than Andy Russell. He was larger than all of them, physically larger than all the linebackers. And, and Mean Joe Green and L.C. Greenwood might have been 250, 260 <laughs> yeah, back then. Yeah, they weren't very Instead good. Instead of 3, 310. Mm -hmm. Rocky Blyer, I think, was 5'8", 170, playing <laughs> fullback. Could you that know, get you a sandwich in, a, in an NFL <clears throat> camp today, one week? You mentioned that Steeler team. That was one of those times in covering sports for yeah. me. That was one of those times, one of those pinch yourself times. I remember yeah. the Steelers played the Saints in 82. And all those guys were still there. And I just had to stop my cameraman and I. He stopped me and said, now, Terry Bradshaw is over there, and Jack Lambert's there, and Franklin Harris is there, and John Stallworth, and Lynn Swan, and Joe Green is over here. And all these people are going to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame one day, and they're all in this real world. Franco Harris. <laughs> Franco Harris. You know, and, you know, it was just one of those where you just kind of look around and go, hmm. It's amazing. Got to go to work. It is amazing, though, Ro, because – out of their 22 starters, I think 14 are in the Hall of Fame. Donnie Shell should be. Donnie Shell should be. And There's no doubt about that. You might yeah. see Mike, Mike Webster. <clears throat> Mike Webster is in. Uh, but all 22 might get mm -hmm. in. But the kicker, Roy Jarella, yeah. who was great. <laughs> right? Yeah, they had uh, – It took. I thought it took uh, John Stallworth longer to get in than he should have. But you know. This was a six-year-old trying – and, and I, I used to write the names down mm -hmm. on pads, memorizing <laughs> where they played college ball. At eight years of age, they were in their last Super Bowl against the Rams. Remember that? Right. Vince Ferragamo mm -hmm. played at Nebraska. It's 1980. Bradshaw mm -hmm. has his last throw to Lynn Swan mm -hmm. in the end zone and John Stallworth. That was the last, like you said, 82, 80. 81, 80. Yeah, that was 80. We'll be back in just a moment. More Roe Brown, Lee Brookine, Louisiana Football TV Magazine. We're back in just a moment. 